Hey folks, Engineer775 here. I had one of my subscribers ask me a very pointed question and also asked me if I would do a video to help him out and to help other people that are in the same situation. And how he pointed, how he directed the question to me, he said, how would you, what would you do if you knew that you only had six weeks worth of oxygen left? And of course, if I only had six weeks of oxygen, that's as long as I'm going to be able to live. And the reason he asked me that question is because he is a type 1 diabetic. And that's basically how long insulin will last if you don't have refrigeration, you're not able to keep it cool. And that's, I have some insulin here. I have a type R and type N um, for NPH. These are over the counter, you can get them in a variety of places. You can actually get it at Walmart, it's probably the cheapest place to get it. Now I'm not a diabetic and fortunately no one in our family is diabetic, but um, you might have family members, folks that are in your group, in your retreat, whatever, neighbors that you know that are diabetic, and if they don't have um, refrigeration, they're not going to be faring well. Uh, DKA, uh, which is diabetic uh, ketoacidosis, and I'm going to refer to that as DKA so I don't mess it up, um, that sets in within like 24 to 48 hours, and that's a crippling condition for a diabetic, and they're basically not doing well at that point. And so insulin's very important. Now, you might be on a different type of insulin, and I'm not a doctor, as I've said many times on my channel. But it's important that you go see a physician so that you know how this can be titrated for your blood sugar levels. That you're taking the right amount of insulin and I, that's about as far as I'm going to go. I'm going to put a few links in the description of this video uh, from the Diabetes Association um, talking about how long can you store these items. This gentleman that approached me, I mean he's been doing his research and he believes that he could store insulin for two and a half years and but that requires that he has refrigeration. Now in colder climates you might be able to come up with some creative things, uh, springs and um, the, you know cold uh, burying it underground, you could do a lot but in a warm climate it's, uh, it's a kiss of death if you do not have refrigeration and you are a, an insulin dependent diabetic, not just a type 1 but you're insulin dependent. So and again don't forget your your test kits, plenty of syringes to go along with it and so I probably have overlooked something as I'm not a diabetic but I wanted to do this video for those of you that are or maybe those of you that just want to um, have a solution for refrigeration. So what I'm going to show you, I've been I bought a refrigerator over here. It is a uh, Coolatron and I'm going to show you a little bit about it, but it's a I was looking for a DC and um, a AC uh, refrigerator, one that could run uh, both on the grid and off the grid directly from a battery or not. And so this is a great little refrigerator. I want to say a little bit about it. It uses a thermoelectric generator to um, boil off a refrigerant in a heat pipe combination. So as the refrigerant boils off, it pulls, um, it pulls the heat out of this container and takes it up. It's got two fans and it. it's a very simple uh, device, uh, simple refrigeration, and it will drop the temperature in the con compartment f uh, 54 degrees below the ambient temperature. So if it's 90 in here, it, you know, there's no air conditioning going on, I can still get that insulin down. And where I want to keep it, where I want to keep this insulin is between 36 and 46 is what I'm shooting for. 36 degrees Fahrenheit to 46 degrees Fahrenheit. And in order to make sure that I did that, I bought this little refrigerator alarm that you can put anywhere it can go on there on the refrigerator or it can go up to 300 feet away from the refrigerator and this will monitor I have two sensors in the, in the refrigerator I'll show you those there's one a little sensor here I'll just stick it on the fridge and that sensor will read the temperature um, and then send the, the the degrees to the to the sensor and if it goes um, over it will uh, it'll let me know it'll start beeping at me so that's just a fail safe and why would I want that? Well, as I'm going to show you, I'm going to have this hooked up and run it off of a couple of different things. My portable solar generator, the Sun Runner, and I'm also going to, for bad weather days and I'm just not putting out enough sun, I'm going to hook it to the crank a -watt. And on the crank a -watt, with the battery I have in it, I can get about six hours of running with this refrigerator. It's not the most efficient AC-DC refrigerator. There's some a uh, little bit better, the uh, Sun Dancer. But of course, the more efficient, the more you're going to pay. So this is a good starting point. I want to get the proof of concept out. I can keep this refrigerator, barring an EMP, 
uh, going forever. Um, so, because it does have a thermal, small thermoelectric module in it, and so um, you know this could be a backup refrigerator put in a Faraday cage, and then if something happened, you could pull it out and run this. I just ran this directly from battery to this system, so batteries typically are not going to fail an EMP. So I, I'm pretty confident I can keep a refrigerator going uh, forever. Um, at least long enough, you know, after two and a half years, I can definitely keep your insulin going for that long. So I hope that helps you uh, insulin dependent diabetics that um, are trying to prepare and you just don't know what to do. I uh, hope that gives you a little bit of peace of mind that you can store insulin for a long time. And there's some small devices. You could go smaller than this. There's some other coolers. And, or if you're not a diabetic and you just want, there's something you have to keep cool. It could be some, something medically. Um, you know, there's a lot of other things that I didn't go into, but uh, insulin is probably the number one thing that needs to be kept cool. I know my wife uh, has the insulin in the pharmacy, has to be stored between 36 uh, degrees and 42, I think is where they keep um, theirs, theirs at in the, in the pharmacy. So that is by law. So um, I think we've covered it, and I hope that is of, of help. If you need any more information, just uh, send me a message, send me an email. If you can't get me on YouTube, I'm sometimes easier to get through email at Practical Preppers, and that's info at practicalpreppers.com, and kind of everything comes in there. So forgive me if I, I don't get all the YouTube comments. So all right, guys and ladies, and and um, I think that's about, I probably forgot something, but if I did, I'm going to try to put it in the description, the links um, for um, everything that I've been talking about. All right, signing off. No, this is not a recommended mounting procedure for your solar panels, putting them on your tractor and on the loader. I was just doing some experimenting late afternoon with a Sunrunner, portable solar system, and uh, wanted to capture the last bit of sun for the day. <laughs> so don't recommend this, but it's kind of cool. You can get the right angle and point right at the sun if you need a little bit more power. Um, if I had a pole here, it would do the same thing. So anyway, just playing around. But I am seriously using this power for the refrigerator and this is a little panel that I keep as a maintainer for the crank -a watt 20 watt panel and on the tractor I've got 280 watts for the Sunrunner okay now I want to show you an option for refrigeration um, this is a uh, 12 volt and a 110 volt fridge you got an AC adapter up here AC plug in here and a 12 volt DC plug in here. So right now I'm running off a of DC. I'm actually running off of the Sun Runner, and I have it plugged into the 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter here. So I like doing this because I bypass. I'm not using the inverter, and I'm just going from DC to DC, and that makes for a very efficient way to run the refrigerator. I can also do the same on the crank watt, but I can run it. AC as well using the inverter on the back and plugging it directly into the AC port. So I think you can hear it running right now. I'll explain a little bit about the refrigerator in a bit. But I just unplugged it. And now I just plugged it in. So it's running off of the inverter now on the Sun Runner. Okay. The solar is charging this. And you see the LED, everything's good. So now we're running the refrigerator. And the way I've got the thermostat set, it kicks on about 40 degrees. I've got two sensors inside. This is an alarm. And there's a lot I'm trying to show in this video. So again, the goal is to keep, in this case, insulin between 36 degrees and 46 degrees. And we're right in there in the zone where we need to be. So I got alarms set. So if anything fails, or if we get the battery doesn't keep up with it, then the alarms will go off. And then I'll have to do something to keep that insulin cold. So the battery in this is no problem keeping it going. But what if you had three, four, five days of no sun? You might have an issue. So that's when I bring out the crank -a watt which I can run the refrigerator off the crank -a watt for about five to six hours on the battery I have in it without uh, without hand cranking so I'll show that 
Well, I've packed a few more things inside of the crank -a -wop. I've actually put a bigger battery. It's a 44 amp hour wheelchair battery. It fits nicely inside the crank -a -wop. And I've also added this 12 volt adapter so I can go DC direct and then put everything in here, close her up, and uh, run the refrigerator off the battery in here. So I'm going to unplug the refrigerator to go off and I'm going to plug it in. Bear with me here. All right, sorry about the shaky video. I'm trying to get a lot in here. The uh, now I'm running right directly off of the uh, Practical Preppers crank a watt running DC, and that battery in there is hooked up to solar too. So I've got two solar options: hand crank option, and I have an alarm that tells me um, if this refrigerator is not running. I actually have two alarms, so it gives me two ways to tell. It's kind of cool, I can have that alarm about, about 300 feet away from 300 feet away from the uh, refrigerator. So, right now I'm at 41 and 40. The refrigerator, this type is, well this brand is just a Coolatron. It's about a $170 refrigerator. And uh, I've got some insulin in here now. I've got my two alarms, I've got syringes. So, just wanted to do show you what you could do. Now, there could be many things that you want to keep cold that you have to keep cold medically. Insulin, obviously, was the first and foremost for this project. So, refrigeration. There's other options, a lot of other options that are pretty cool, and I'll put some links in the description. Uh, one is the Sundancer direct drive solar refrigerator, but you know this is a really good a good uh, cheaper option um, to start off with and this could get you through uh, keep that insulin going and keep it going in a sustainable way so to kind of sum it up this is an AC DC refrigerator it's a thermal electric refrigerator in the back of this there are is what are called heat pipes I'm using a little thermal electric it, it uses a thermal electric module to heat the refrigerant and then the refrigerant pulls as it vaporizes, it pulls the heat out of the container inside, cooling it off. And this one will actually cool to 54 degrees below the ambient temperature. So that's pretty impressive. Really, really a good, good uh, differential between your ambient and what it can actually do. So Sunrunner, keep it going. Hand crank if you get in trouble. Uh, also keeping the solar on that. So right now, having no problem, I'm running. Let's see what we're doing here voltage so I'm running the I've got 12.7 volts I hope everybody's following this <laughs> and then I'm gonna set the camera here next to the pulley and I can I can crank and put energy into the battery so I'm charging the battery now so that's also an advantage again if you want to get through a couple hours of no sun and the alarms going off and you got no other way to charge then you would go to the hand crank or the bicycle to get the battery voltage up